Hi guys welcome to my YouTube channel today we are going to see about salsa fuel pump timing adjustment. The fuel pump is the heart of a diesel engine. It ensures that the right amount of fuel is injected into the combustion chamber at the right moment. The fuel delivered by the fuel pump passes through high pressure pipes to the fuel valves. The high temperature in the combustion chamber due to compression of the air ensures self ignition of the finely atomized fuel. Here you see in slow motion the process of combustion in an RTA diesel engine. To ensure optimal combustion at all times, the fuel pump must be periodically checked and adjusted. This film is intended to show you how the Sulzer valve controlled pump works and to show you how it should be checked and adjusted. This sectional model enables you to follow the working principle of the fuel pump. With its upward stroke, the plunger delivers fuel to the injection valves. The suction valve controls the beginning of fuel delivery by closing, while the spill valve controls the end of delivery by opening. The delivery valve functions only as a non-return valve. The closing of the suction valve and the opening of the spill valve are controlled by the upward motion of the plunger drive. Through these two rocker arms and adjustable push rods. From this it is clear that fuel is only delivered when the suction and spill valves are closed. By turning the eccentric shaft, which acts as the rocker arm fulcrum, the spill valves are made to open earlier or later, regulating in this way the fuel quantity to be delivered. As a guiding value for the fuel delivery rate, there is a scale from 0 to 10 the so-called load indicator. You'll find all the instructions you need for checking and adjusting the fuel pump in the maintenance manual. Group 551, pages 1 to 1i. At the beginning of the working sheets, you will always find a list of the tools with the appropriate code numbers. From the code numbers, you can find the corresponding tools in the maintenance manual, group 940. Always look up carefully in the maintenance manual the instructions given in the course of this film. Always use the correct tools and always ensure cleanliness when assembling. The necessary adjustments may be found in the acceptance report under setting table, sheet A. The fuel pump must be adjusted only to the values taken from the setting table, namely the load indicator position, the idle stroke A, that is the plunger movement from the base circle of the fuel cam till the suction valve closes, beginning of delivery, that is the crank angle in degrees before or after top dead center when the suction valve closes, the total stroke B, that is the plunger movement from the base circle of the fuel cam till the spill valve opens. End of delivery, that is the crank angle in degrees after top dead center when the spill valve opens. The effective delivery stroke is arrived at by subtracting the idle stroke A from the total stroke B, while the delivery angle is the sum of 
or the difference between the crank angles at beginning and end of delivery. Before starting to check or adjust the fuel pump, the following preparations must be made. The engine should have run at least 30 minutes on diesel fuel before it is stopped. After opening the indicator cocks, closing the starting air shutoff valve and engaging the turning gear, we can start work on the fuel pump. Close the fuel supply and return valves on the fuel pump in question. By removing this screw plug, the remaining fuel is drained off from the pump block. Before adjusting the fuel pump, make sure that the cams and rollers are intact. First, the stagnation pressure control valve is dismantled. Watch that no parts drop out. Note the valve designations, S for suction, D for delivery, and U for spill valve. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1E, figure 3. After lifting off the valve covers and removing the springs, the pressure bushes are released with this special wrench. The valves are taken out with the help of this withdrawing device. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1D, figure C. Examine the three valves carefully, especially their seats and contact surfaces. Defective valves must be reconditioned or replaced. The valve contact surfaces in the fuel pump block must also be in good condition. Rough or damaged contact surfaces must be reconditioned. If necessary, the sealing surfaces on the fuel pump block and covers can be reconditioned with this grinding tool. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 2. After cleaning the fuel pump block thoroughly, the suction and spill valves are rinsed in clean diesel oil and refitted without their springs. Pressure bushes are tightened to 300 newton meters.
Before mounting the dial gauges and their holders, make sure that they move easily. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1D, figure D. Before the fuel pump can be adjusted, there are further preparations to be made. Start up the oil pumps for bearings and crossheads, and adjust pressures for normal operation. Set the reversing lever on the emergency control stand to ahead. Check the red pin number 12 on the synoptic panel in the logic box. It must not stick out. The fuel lever is moved out of its remote control position, engaged on the linkage, and set to position 8. The shutdown servo motor moves into its working position. The piston of the shutdown servo motor is locked in its working position by means of the spacing tube and tensioning bolt. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1C, Figure B. On the control air supply, the control air shutoff valves are closed, then the system is vented. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1B, figure A. The fuel quality setting lever must be moved to zero. Note its position before moving. For RTA engines of previous design, remove the VIT cam on the variable injection timing mechanism. On the other hand, for RTA engines of later design, replace the VIT cam with this circular running in disc. Set the fuel lever on the emergency control stand so that the pointer on the adjusting scale is exactly at the position 8 specified in the acceptance report. Finally, make sure that the pointer on the VIT indicator is exactly at zero, the roller is in contact with the circular disc, and that no spacers have been fitted to reduce the fuel delivery. After all preparations have been carried out, we adjust the fuel pump as follows. The engine is turned till the plunger reaches its highest position. The dial gauge above the plunger is used to indicate this. Make sure that the dial gauge has still enough stroke left to reach the cam pike position. The dial gauge above the suction valve, now closed, is set to zero. The engine is turned back till the plunger reaches its lowest position. Check whether the roller is on the base circle of the cam. The dial gauges above the spill valve, which is now closed, and above the plunger, are set to zero. The engine is turned ahead till the dial gauge above the plunger shows the amount of the idle stroke A. Make absolutely sure that all adjustments are reached only when turning ahead. With these special wrenches, the adjustable push rod of the suction valve is adjusted so that the dial gauge above the valve shows 0.02 millimeters. The locking nut of the push rod in question must already have been tightened. 
On the flywheel graduation, check the corresponding crank angle for the beginning of delivery and compare it with the angle stated in the acceptance report. Admissible deviation is plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees. If the deviation exceeds this tolerance, the reason for the discrepancy must first be investigated. If necessary, the fuel cam must be turned appropriately. Look up the maintenance manual, group 421, page 1B. The engine is turned ahead further till the dial gauge above the plunger shows the value of the total stroke B. The dial gauge over the suction valve must now indicate zero. Just like the suction valve, the adjustable push rod of the spill valve is adjusted so that the dial gauge above it shows 0.02 millimeters. Here also, the locking nut must already have been tightened. Finally, the corresponding angle for the end of delivery is read off on the flywheel and compared with the acceptance report. The fuel pump is now adjusted. Nonetheless, it is advisable to check it once more as just described. This check can also be made to ascertain the actual state prior to adjusting the fuel pump. The description for this may be found in the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1G, figures 1 to 4. After all fuel pumps have been adjusted and checked, Without having moved the load indicator at all, the cutout checks must be performed. These are very important to the safety of the engine. Because the load indicator has to be moved to do this, the dial gauges are mounted and adjusted once more on each pump. After the dial gauges have been adjusted, the roller should be on the base circle of the cam. The engine is now turned ahead till the gauge above the plunger shows the amount of the idle stroke A. At the same time, the dial gauge above the suction valve must show 0.02 millimeters. At the first cutout check, it must be ascertained how much the spill valve opens when the suction valve is just closing and the fuel lever is set to zero. While the pointer on the adjusting plate is at zero, check whether the load indicator on the engine is also at zero. This amount can be read off on the dial gauge at the spill valve and compared with the value quoted in the acceptance report. It must never be less than 0.8 millimeters. Now we check the manual cutout on the fuel pump. The engine is turned ahead till the cutout handle moves in again. With this lever, the roller is lifted from the cam by turning it 180 degrees. There must be clearance between the roller and the fuel cam peak. Look up the maintenance manual, group 551, page 1H. After this check, the pump is cut in again. The adjustment of the fuel pumps is completed. All parts are reassembled in the reverse sequence. All internal pump parts must be rinsed with clean paraffin or kerosene or diesel oil. Tighten the pressure bushes to 300 newton meters. Don't forget the springs when reassembling.
check the contact surfaces on the fuel pumps and covers once more. Grease the screws with Mollicoat G paste. These Allen screws are tightened evenly and crosswise in stages to 60 Newton meters. Carefully check the contact surfaces on the stagnation pressure control valve and on the covers. Testing and adjusting the stagnation pressure control valve is described in the maintenance manual, group 551, pages 4 and 4A. These Allen screws, too, are tightened crosswise in stages to 60 Newton meters. After carefully adjusting and checking the fuel pumps, all alterations made in the course of the preparations must be restored to their previous state. Open the cocks of the fuel supply and return lines on the fuel pumps, place the fuel system under pressure and perform a leak test. This system does not have to be vented. The circulation valve looks after that. Put the pneumatic system under pressure. Restore the variable injection timing mechanism to its original state. Return the fuel quality setting lever to its previous position. Remove the spacing tube on the shutdown servo motor, screw in the tensioning bolt and secure it again. Set the fuel lever to its remote control position and bring the reversing lever to stop. The fuel pumps should be checked and adjusted in this way every 6,000 to 8,000 hours of operation or if fuel pump parts likely to affect fuel injection timing have been replaced. It is absolutely forbidden to adjust the fuel pump during operation by altering the push rod length. Before putting the engine into operation, carry out all safety precautions set out in the service instructions pages 011 to 0112. If you have any questions about this film, please address them to a station of our worldwide service organization. At this point, we would like to draw your attention to our diesel training center in Winterthur.